this is an excellent topic and a great question. It's easy to go out onto a body of water and see all the fishy looking stuff, right? Weed beds that go on for 500 yards, all kinds of rocks and brush piles. And, and that's all great, we catch bass on those. But there's something about that subtle cover. That lone stick, that tiny little clump of weeds that not only usually has a fish on it, but sometimes it is a quality bass. And that's what I wanna talk about today. How do we find this subtle cover? Or I should say, what is it exactly that we are looking for? When I'm going down the shoreline, the first thing that I do is when I catch myself thinking, yeah, that doesn't look like it's worth throwing at, it probably is. I'll never forget this last spring when we were doing some underwater filming in an area on a lake that I have passed by, I can't even tell you how many, maybe hundreds of times. I have not fished this spot, and I just passed right by it. Well, we were sitting there filming, and I was getting some lures ready, and my oldest son was running the underwater camera, the drone, and he goes, oh my gosh, Dad, come here, take a look at this. And there was two bass that were making a nest and setting up and spawning on this tiniest little branch that I didn't even realize was there and how big the branch got because from the boat or from the shore and even with polarized glasses you were looking down it just looks like just a tiny tiny little stick like it's a total waste of time but that tiny little stick was just one little piece of a larger branch and I can almost promise you that those two bass down there are completely untouched by anybody because that cover looked like nothing. So we can't assume even that, even that little pencil branch sticking up doesn't have some good fish on it. So that's what I do. I catch myself if I'm saying, Steve, nah, that's not worth your time and effort. I stop and I always cast to it and oftentimes it pays off. This can also be applied to other types of composition, let's say bottom composition. If you've got an area that just has a bunch of fist-sized rock and then you find a little bit bigger rock, definitely that is worth your time and effort. And one thing that just amazes me is even, like I said earlier, with polarized glasses and we're looking at the shoreline, and it'll look like nothing is there. I mean nothing. Oh, I can see everything. There's nothing there. And then somebody that's fishing with me in the back of the boat or one of my sons will throw up in there, and boom, they'll catch a three-pounder. I, I didn't see that thing at all. It was blended into the bottom so well and positioned just right. Even when I'm looking for a fish, I still didn't see it. So it's always worth that time and effort to target a piece of cover or structure when it's something slightly different, like I said, slightly larger rock in an area that has a bunch of smaller rock into it. That little subtle difference is often a key feature. Another one I see all the time, especially up north here, is different types of vegetation. Maybe you have a little stand of milfoil that's surrounded by sand grass. Well, not only are you gonna have a difference in height, but also a difference in density as well. So that's just a subtle, subtle piece of cover that can hold nice fish. Speaking of vegetation, so you've got a, a big, you know, area weed bed out there, and you know, maybe there's one spot where it just dips into the weed bed a little bit, a tiny little cut like an underwater pocket. Those are subtle little changes that can just really be dynamite. I've got a spot here on my lake that I, I've caught so many fish on. It's just ridiculous how many bass I've caught on it. Well, this year, the folks that do the weed control went a little bit overboard and just like killed everything. Like the lake looks like a moon out there. Well, I could see when I went over this spot a few weeks ago, and I was, like, you know, I was kind of mad. I was like, oh man, you know, this is where I always catch a good one here, blah, blah, blah. Well, then I was looking down. There were some tires somebody had lashed together many, many years ago and put out there probably 30, 40 yards off of their dock. So it was these tires and then the vegetation growing on top of that that made that subtle difference. All around that, I mean, this weed bed is normally probably the four or five 
like if I took four or five of, of this boat and put them all together, the weed bed is normally about that size, but it was always this one corner, this one spot that you could almost call your shot. Well, it's because those tires were down there making a subtle, subtle change. And this next one is one of my favorites, those small walkways that connect a floating dock to the shoreline. Man, I love this subtle type of cover. You know, we'll often hit the outside edges of the big floating dock, throw up inside the slips a little bit, you know, drop a jig down the pilings that are going down. But that little walkway is something that is, it just casts just a tiny shadow. And as the sun moves through the sky, obviously that shadow changes positions. But that walkway connects shallow to deep, shallow water to deeper water. And a lot of times people don't really think about that, that subtle little shadow right there because it may only be 18 inches wide or two feet wide when the rest of that dock just looks so enticing. But taking the time to hit that tiny little walkway, that connecting walkway, it, I've caught so many bass doing that, especially when other anglers are just pounding the front side of those floating docks. So that's a subtle little change that's worth our time and effort. Okay, now we talked about shallow water, right? So if you're a shallow water angler, subtle changes are pretty easy to find. But what about if you like to fish deeper and you're using your electronics? I like to focus on finding the bait, the bait fish or schools of sunfish. I mean, I, I've seen schools of bluegills on ledges that are 80, or a hundred bluegills just hanging out there, okay? There's just a ton of them. That's pretty easy to find on your electronics, especially that side imaging. Then I will start to break down, do I see anything in that bottom composition? Is, is there a stump out there? Is there a big old boulder out there? Did somebody throw a brush pile out there? So to find these subtle differences, I'm gonna locate the bait, locate the bait fish, the prey species, then take a closer look at what might be there that maybe a three, four, five pounder is just set up on really tight that we can't always see on our electronics. But if there's food there, there's a good chance there's gonna be a bass there as well. Hey, if you wanna watch a video on the first thing that I do when I go to a new body of water, go ahead and check this one out right here. And don't forget to encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.